if America falls, you know, and, and this is part of the thing, if America falls, it is going to open up an entire end time scenario. Because when you look at the end time problem, you don't see America as the head. And if it goes, you're going to have all sorts of all these other uh, forces, which you read about in Revelation, you read about end time, are going to be unleashed. So we're watching that at the same time. And if America falls or turns away from Israel, Israel is going to be in a situation that is more in line with what we see in end time prophecy. And ultimately that only will be answered by Messiah. Hope is the belief that our future is gonna be better than our past. And at the root of that hope is the blessed hope. So no matter what happens, Yeshua is returning. No one's gonna stop the kingdom. So ultimately it's a win-win. It's all yes. gonna turn out for good, no matter what. We don't need to live in fear. We don't need to live in hopelessness. Uh, we have a hope in the future. That's the promise of Jeremiah. Uh, he knows the plans that he has for us, right? So. But yeah. we talked a lot about America, but let me ask you a question. I mean, obviously uh, in God's biblical plan and especially for you and I as Jewish followers of Yeshua, Israel and the Jewish people play an absolutely critical central role, God's prophetic timepiece. Uh, you know, what do you see going on in Israel among the Jewish people? Any thoughts about that? Yeah, well, I'll, yeah, I'll, that is absolutely, you know, the the center and the the end, the end game, and all that. And and one of the things that for those, uh, you know, uh, when I wrote the book, thought the oracle is all about that, is all about the mysteries behind Israel and what's what's going. Um, and yes, absolutely. Well, one of the things is that I mean, you know, we are part of we are part of a remnant, but you know, in Israel, it has been spread. I mean, it's been spreading the gospel. We know that you know, there's a mystery of return, and that is that that you know the way things were at the beginning of the age is the way things are going to be at the end of the age the beginning age you had in israel the end you've got in israel back you had jewish people in jerusalem you got jewish people in jerusalem um you had jewish believers like you and me you got them again you got you had non-jewish believers coming back to their jewish roots that's happening all over the body so we're watching return you know now you know it's it's amazing as you you know with all that's happened and all this the censoring and all that all this stuff and everything Nothing has stopped the prophetic purpose of God. And if you look, I mean, for instance, what happened in the last few years? Donald Trump recognized Jerusalem for the first time in, in you know, since ancient times. You had a world leader recognizing Jerusalem as the eternal capital of Israel. That, um, that was gigantic, and there's a million things behind that. Well, it hasn't stopped. I mean, you know, th there is move now of Jewish people going on the Temple Mount and praying openly for the first time. It's never, never happened before. It's happening. Um, there's it, it all sets the stage for the next thing. We we uh, believe a few things. One is that we expect the word of Messiah to continue to spread in Israel uh, among the remnant, but that to continue to happen as it was in the beginning. Um, we 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 are watching also the Abrahamic Accords, the Abrahamic Accord, which is amazing that that's even happened. Um, but we know there will not ultimately be peace. Um, you know, we're what you know until Messiah comes. So we're watching also things with Russia and Turkey. We all these things mentioned in Ezekiel thirty eight and thirty nine. Um, but ultimately, you know, uh, it will be as it was in the beginning. There will be a a, a a movement of believers coming back. It won't be the whole nation until the time. But when the time comes, it shall be. But everything, has, nothing has stopped. In fact, more and more nations are recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, which is part of prophecy. It's all got to end there. So all we expect, you know, and, and the other thing, one other note is that as we watch America, if America falls, you know, and, and this is part of the thing, if America falls, it is going to open up an entire end time scenario. Because when you look at the end time problem, you don't see America as the head. And if it goes, you're going to have all sorts of all these other uh, forces, which you read about in Revelation, you read about end time, are going to be unleashed. So we're watching that at the same time. And if America falls or turns away from Israel, Israel is going to be in a situation that is more in line with what we see in end time prophecy and ultimately that only will be answered by Messiah. Amen. And and I think it's and again, even as you say that, what strikes me is so incredible is that, I mean, for shortly after all the followers of Yeshua were Jewish, all the apostles were Jewish, all the writers of the New Testament were Jewish and really the, the you know, Israel, the disciples being Jewish, bringing the Besorah, the good news to the nations was a partial fulfillment of Isaiah, you will be a light unto the nations. 
obviously read in the book of Revelation, the 144,000, that is a next level fulfillment of Israel's calling. The callings of God, Romans says, is irrevocable. The gifts and the calling of God is irrevocable. Israel is going to ultimately fulfill its prophetic destiny to be a light to the nations, to bring the good news, to bring the message of Yeshua and salvation to the world. And But what's amazing is when you say the remnant is that you know, shortly within a couple hundred years, uh, within 300 years of the good news going forth, the Messianic Jewish believers, as, with the final blow really being under Constantine, right? The, the Jewish roots get stripped from the church. The Jewish believers get excluded from the church. Their voice gets kind of drowned out. A lot of different pagan influences uh, come in. And, and and so for really for for you know almost two thousand years, you didn't have. There's always a remnant of Jewish people who believe, but you didn't have a strong remnant of Jewish believers who, as Jewish followers of Jesus, Jew, who were influencing and being a prophetic voice into the culture, into the body of Messiah, and yet that you know with the birth of the Messianic movement, there begins in the 1960s begins to be a a higher level restoration of that. And then, I mean, it's it's really history, right? The fact that the fact that you're speaking to the Israel and the nations, the fact that you have several New York Times best-selling books, right? And you know, you lead me, the Lord. I write a best a New York's best a New York Times bestseller with, with Kathy Lee Gifford, right? And just how this is coming full, this is like like us sitting here, two messianic rabbis talking about these things is is prophetic <laughs> i mean yeah. it's significant it shows the time and season which we're living in which uh, it yeah. just blows me yeah. away yeah i mean you know the best of times the worst of times <laughs> you know yeah yeah you know, but that listen that's how it was in the beginning you know when we when when the jewish believers were you know there in the spotlight it was not a time of christianity being a cultural you know accepted thing it was radical it was persecution so we don't get to come back you know under the easy times we get back we come back in the dramatic times but that is a sign and it's not only what is happening on our side on our end but also the flip side is the church as a whole overwhelmingly born again believers are more uh in tuned and in love with israel and the jewish roots yep. than ever since the beginning so that's the other side yep. you know god is restoring both and it has to be you know and so in that sense you know it, it, though it's challenging it's the most exciting time to live in um you know it's like the the candle in the daytime okay but the candle in the night it's a little harder but it's more glorious you can light up the world and that's true for every believer who will stand for god yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, because it's, it's you know, to bring about the full restoration, right? Yeah. You know, Paul talks about Romans 11, the olive tree, talks about the Gentiles being the wild shoots that are grafted into the Jewish olive tree. And the reality is you need the roots, the Jewish roots and the Gentile shoots to bring forth the maximum fruit. Yeah. Right? And when, and when these shoots are not attacked, attached to the roots, the Jewish roots, and the Jewish believers, you end up with a lot of strange fruit. <laughs> or, <laughs> yeah, or less fruit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you we need each other. It's just like it's like Ruth and Naomi. You know, it's not complete. You need the Jew needs the Gentile, the Gentile needs the Jew. We're not complete without it. Uh, you know, it, it, you know, one has one part of the mystery, the other part is the other And For two thousand years, you had you know the church, much of the the church and you know most of Israel separated, and it's kind of like it's kind of like a body and a spirit that don't are not together. When they come together, it's resurrection. And so, yeah, this is the power. This is what the Bible said. And so that is the exciting time. You know, I was I, you know I was led to the Lord because of I picked up a book on prophecy and that wow prophecy. But the the point is, we are a prophetic people and we are part of prophecy. And so it's it's exciting to do. We are living in prophetic times, and you're not going to get prophetic times without opposition. You know, so understand that it's okay but now go for the highest this is what it's all about this is we were put in our mother's wombs for such a time as this